Good morning, everyone, and welcome to a daily dose of your spiritual vitamin with Barney B. This morning, I'm going to talk about the book of Enoch again. We're doing Enoch, the lost GP, the the lost prophet, um, greater than Abraham, holier than Moses. We're talking about all the things that God had bestowed upon Enoch, all the different titles of what God, Enoch could do. We're studying Enoch because we need to understand the prophet from which whose works we're, we're studying. And this will give you a better insight into who this prophet Enoch was. So before we start, we're going to go into prayer. And then we're going to start studying a little bit more about Enoch before we get into original blacks in the Bible. Okay, I got a couple more things in Enoch I want to cover. And then we'll start dealing with the original blacks in the Bible. So if you'll join me in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we want to tell you thank you. Thank you for another day. Thank you for another opportunity. Thank you for blessing us with your presence. Father God, as we go before the table of self, I ask that you help us to be able to get that that you have or divinely ordained us to receive. Help us, help your word and your knowledge to enlighten our hearts that our consciousness may open up. Father God, lead us, direct us, and point us in the right direction to get all those things that you've already ordained us to receive. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay. Let's start to eat. A little hungry. Okay. We're going to start with Enoch, the Metatron. The Metatron, the beloved of God, Metatron. Now y'all can see how Enoch got his name. I said to Metatron, why are you called by the name of your creator with 70 names? I said to Enoch, I, I asked, I said to Metatron, why are you called by the name of your creator with 70 names? You are greater than all the princes, more exalted than any, than all the angels, more beloved than all the ministers, more honored than all the hosts, and elevated over all potentates and sovereignty, greatness and glory. Why do they then call you youth in your heavenly heights? And he answered, because I am Enoch, the son of Jared. This is found in the Old Testament Pseudographia, Apocalyptic Literature and Testaments, Volume 1, James H. Charlesworth. Okay. From the book of the Gates of the Old City, the question is asked of Metatron. What is the nature of this one who ascends the heights of the heights? I have chosen this one in preference to you all to be a prince and ruler over you in heavenly heights. Instantly they all went to me, prostrated themselves before me and said, Happy are you. Happy are your parents because your creator has favored you. And since I am young in their company, and the mere youth among them in days and months and years. Therefore, they call me youth. He became the archangel Metatron. 3 Enoch 4 through 16. Third Enoch. Let's see if we can find third Enoch. 3 Enoch. the other Enoch, don't I? Yeah, these are all first and second. Must get a copy of the third. Yeah. Okay. He was a Messianic figure, the agent of God, 3 Enoch, 10, 3 through 6. Enoch was a figure 
who aroused considerable passion. The Lost Prophet, Book of Enoch, and the Influence of Christianity. Enoch represented the vice region of the Holy One, but the characterization of the translated Enoch is not restricted to describing him as a celestial scribe or writer. The various honors and offices conferred upon him are set forth in successive stages, progressing towards a climax. Thus, he is made as a ruler and judge over the angelic hosts and princes of kingdoms. He is also the representative and vice regent of the Holy One. The representative and the vice regent. He is one of the intermarry between the Most High and the angelic world, as well as the insignia of all his dignity by the Holy One himself. The Holy One makes him sit on a throne similar to his own. That's the best friend. Gives him a curtain similar to the curtain spread over the throne of glory. The throne of the man angel is placed at the door of the seventh hall. The innermost of the divine hecalops or palaces. After this the heavenly herald is sent out into the heavens to announce him as Metatron. The servant of the holy one. He, rep he is representative of and vice region. Hebrew Book of Enoch. Got to get a copy of that. From the book of the gates of the old city, the question is asked of Metatron or Enoch, why is he favored? The angel Metatron, prince of the face, who dwells in the heights, said to me, because of the abundant love and great compassion with which whom the Holy One blessed me, he loved and cherished me more than all the children of the heights. He wrote with his finger as a pen of flame upon the crown which was on my head, the letters by which heaven and earth were created. Metatron retains his, retains his functions of scribe, witness, testifier, associated with him on the ground of his identity of Enoch the scribe, witness, and testifier of men's deeds. See, so God elevated Enoch to testify against the deeds of man. Because in Enoch's glory of, with God, Enoch was the only perfect man. He's the man angel. Metatron, the steward of the angelic host, who acts as a kind of intermediary between God and man. Metatron is depicted as the figure, biblical character Enoch, who was taken up to heaven from the midst of a sinful generation and transformed into an angel. Metatron's identity with Enoch symbolizes into early life into the existence of a terrestrial man and the ascent of the terrestrial man into a celestial being. Three Enoch or the Hebrew book of Enoch and the Hugo Oldberg edition. Raphael Parti of Fairleigh Dixon University a noted anthropologist and biblical scholar cites the following passage from Midrash about Enoch. You are greater than all the celestial princes, higher than the angels, more beloved than all the servants, more honored than all the hosts, and more exalted than all the powers and sovereignty and greatness and glory. Why then do they call you youth in heavenly heights? He answered and said to me, because I am Enoch, the son of Jared, for whom the generations of the deluge sinned and turned to evil deeds and said to God, Depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. And that's in Job 21.14. The Holy One, blessed he, took me from their midst to be a witness against them in heavenly heights 
to all those who walk on earth so that they should not say the merciful one is cruel. In ancient writings of the ascensions of Moses, Metatron announces himself to Moses as Enoch, the son of Jared. He is the guide of Moses during his ascent into the heavens. This can be verified in 3 Enoch or the Hebrew book of Enoch. Ishmael asks his Metatron to identify himself in a particular to explain the title youth, Naar which means Merkaba. Angels addressed him. Metatron reveals that he is Enoch, the son of Jared. In 5 Genesis 18-24, as the youngest of the angel princes, he is known as youth. He recounts in detail to Ishmael how Enoch was taken up to heaven and transformed into Metatron, one of the highest of the archangel who acts as God's vice regent. Having established Metatron's impeccable credentials as a heavenly guide, Metatron is identified with the prince of the world, God's vice regent over the world. Their rabbi, Ishmael, narrates when he ascended on high to behold the vision of the chariot he created when greeted by Metatron, who has several names, including Enoch, the son of Jared. Metatron tells him how he was taken up from the generation of the flood and how the Holy One, blessed be, made me, made for me, example Metatron, a throne like the throne of glory. The sepulcher of the star, the Messiah of the Dead Sea Scrolls, and other ancient literature. Professor Audenberg, Audenberg narrates about the pilgrimage of Mer ne no, Metatron's spirit or the spiritual essence of the righteous that indicates that two earthly men were made into angels. Enoch who became Metatron and Elijah who became Saddlephon. Metatron and Saddlephon. The Hebrew book of Enoch transcribe, describes Enoch's transformation in the following fashion. Instantly, my flesh turned into flames, sinews into blazing fire, my bones into embers of broom fire, my eyelids into lightning flashes, the wheels of my eyes into fiery torches. The hairs of my head into flames and flares, and all my limbs into wings of burning fire. The body of my statue into blame, blazing fire. These are excerpts from third, 3 Enoch, verses 3 through 16. The Enoch Metatron ideas are connected with Genesis 5.24. He was not for God took him. And Enoch's elevation into Metatron Nair is based on Proverbs 22.6. The sequence Enoch Metatron or sometimes Metatron Enoch is frequent. And three Enoch, or the Hebrew book of Enoch, the Hugo Oldenburg edition, New York, KTAB Publishing House. The book, a dictionary of angels, declared that Metatron was considered mightier than either Michael or Gabriel. And this is, which is, a, which is the view expressed in the Chronicles of Jehoramim. In the Yaku Hadash, Metatron is said to be the appointed over Michael and Gabriel. Appointed. Metatron is the latter in Jacob's vision. 
on which the ladder of angels were descending and ascending. So Jacob's ladder, there were angels going up and angels coming down the ladder. Gershom Sholem, a professor at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, indicated that Metatron is the angel of whom all is said in Exodus 23.20. Beware of him, for my name is in him. Major trends in Jewish mysticism, New York. It is said that Exodus 23.20 refers to Metatron. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and bring thee unto the place which I have prepared. That's Metatron. Usually applied to John the Baptist in Exodus 23:22, My name is in him. In addition, Metatron has identified as the liberating angel. Proverbs 22, 6 says, is interpreted, Enoch was made into Nerer, Metatron, by the Holy One who took him from on earth and made him a ruler on high forever. Throughout the literature, which is three, uh, the Hebrew book of Enoch by Hugo Oldenburg, throughout this literature, Metatron, or whatever name is given to him, remains in position of the highest of all created beings. And this is added by Gustav Davison at the University of Fellow at Waxmer College in England. In the book dictionary of angels. Metatron is the tallest angel in heaven and the greatest. And legend relates that upon Metatron, while still Enoch, a mortal, arriving in heaven, he was transformed into a spirit of fire. He is living, he is a living record of the spirit's journey from the earliest beginning to the last phase. So Enoch is an example of what God wants for all of us. That's what God wants to do. Same thing he's done to Enoch. Which is to transform you from a regular person to a being of light. Legends related that upon Metatron while still Enoch a mortal... Arriving in heaven, when he arrived in heaven, he was a mortal. He was transformed into a spirit of fire. He is a living record of the spirits that source inside of you. That spirit's journey from its earliest beginnings to his last phases. Which means the way God transformed Enoch. It's the same way he's going to transfer the elect, the righteous, and all of the hosts of heaven. He's going to do the same thing. The spirit's descent and ascent are also brought into connection with the mystical language of Ezekiel 114 in the, in the traditional Bible. The descent is the running. The ascent is the returning. The descent is the running. And the ascent is the returning. Metatron has also been credited with the authorship of Psalm 3725 according to the Talmud. And the authorship in part of Isaiah 24.16 in Zolar 1. Metatron is spoken of as, um, as Moses' rod. I'm going to talk a little bit about Enoch, the mightiest prophet of God. If you think Enoch's attributes are exaggerated, then consider this. What kind of human being do you think would have qualified qualifications to walk with God? How many of us how many of us have them? 
I don't think too many. To be taken up into heaven, body and soul, would stagger the human imagination. Yet scripture verifies all this and more experienced by Enoch. He was taken up full form. He was not transformed yet. He was still merely a man. Okay. So. Those first two lines found in Genesis speaks volumes for the depth of righteousness and holiness that Enoch the Ethiopian must have possessed. The many characteristics we have obtained or outlined only reflect the phenomenon known as Enoch. The greatest heroes of Israel's past, Abraham, Moses, David, and Amos, they were all shepherds. Every one of them. And this is found in the ABCs of the Bibles. New York Reader's Digest Association. But Enoch, by his deeds, is greater than all of the biblical personalities in Scripture. Enoch was an immortal, not Abraham or Moses. He also walked with God. Something that's not said of Abraham or Moses in the Bible, is it? Enoch the Ethiopian has the highest religious stature in Scripture next to Jesus Christ. If one considers the biblical accounts of his life, he is the first and only example of both having walked with God and ascending bodily into heaven. And you can find it in Genesis 5, 21 through 24. Enoch sets the biblical standard for the whole, for the word legend. He adds new dimensions to the scale of human achievement and on a spiritual level he's triumphant over adversity those fatalities and weaknesses that plague all earthly beings he expands and knows the boundaries of the human potential he stood in the threshold a perfection and he passed over the first perfect human being was Enoch he was the consummate of biblical character devoted to righteousness and righteous living he was an anti devilian masterpiece a perfection who was a natural forerunner of Jesus Christ. The natural forerunner of Jesus Christ. So not John the Baptist. Enoch. Who for thought? Meditate. Pray. Father. Meditate, pray, ask the Father. Meditate, pray, ask the Father. Let me show you. You know, open your eyes up to enlightenment. You know, you open it all up. He'll show you. Just gotta believe. That same thing he did for Enoch, he'll do for you. Same thing that Enoch asked for wisdom and knowledge, God gave it to him. Enoch asked questions, God answered them. That's to show you that no matter what you got on your mind, God will tell you. He will. You just got to trust him enough to ask. We're going to pick back up in Enoch. 
the lost prophet. Okay. I'm going to keep it moving. Till the next vitamin. Be blessed. Peace and love. I'd like to welcome my star seeds, divine masculines, divine feminines, those who are tired of traditional Bible, those who are looking for something new. Those who want to know the truth about who God really is. And the real deal. That's what this is all about. We're preparing warriors for the spirit of God. Preparing for this battle. Preparing these consciousness to waken up. Awaken. Open. We need the spirit of God to come in. Feed. So those divine feminines and masculines can have their bodies because they're out here waiting to inhabit their host. So it's wake up time. Time to take this pill. And open your consciousness to who God really is. So God stay blessed. Until it's time for the next daily dose of spiritual vitamins. With Bonnie D. If you like the contents check it and subscribe come on back and join me for another dose love you guys